I imagine there's also a market for other human type snacks. I'm not sure yet. I, I, the conscious part of me, is not sure how far down this rabbit hole I want to travel that my subconscious has been going into. I gotta add some fellow from a folder in this sack. But all I can find is this knife. Why is there blood on the knife, Rocky? Well, howdy, 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 near the senior citizen here. Greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this, a brand new day. Son of a gun. It is gray and diffuse light. It is chilly outside. It is damp. It was raining last night when I went walkies. When I was coming back, it stopped, and I was doing pretty good. My feet were wet, but not horribly wet, and then I went and stomped through a hidden puddle, splashed my shoes, got them thoroughly soaked, had to laugh. I mean, getting mad isn't going to help because my feet will still be soaked. So I laughed loudly because objectively it's funny. Remember, Mel Brooks has said that comedy is when you fall into an open sewer and die and tragedy is when I cut my finger. So the fact that it happened to me is what made it not funny, but it was funny. So thumbs up on that. Anyway, front loading of videos. If you could toss me a like, that'd be very cool. If you could subscribe to the channel, that'd be awesome. If you could leave me a comment, anything even for the algorithm, double plus good. If you could uh, even watch this. Because <laughs> I would like to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people are in fact literally beautiful and literally awesome. Helping to keep me and my aging pets alive. It is appreciated. If you would like to help out any of these people and help me stay alive. I do have links down in the video description. There's links to a PayPal for donations, an Amazon wishlist link, and a post office box so that you can send me anything at all. Postcards, keychains, I'll show them off in channel if anybody sends anything. So thumbs up and front loading the videos over. Yay! Oh, I get blisters on my feet a lot. Not my actual feet, feet on the, my bottom sides of my toes because my feet squidge around a lot on the inside of my shoes and I have insanely delicate skin, have had my whole life. So I get blisters a lot. I have had a blister on my right toe, so I had to put a band-aid around it because it hurt a lot. And so it just cleared up, got my feet soaked, and now I've got a huge blister on my one of my toes on the left. But I get, as stated, a lot. Just the other day, I pulled some calluses off the bottoms of my toes that were, in fact, filled with old blisters. So there were all these dark blood stains inside of them. Thumbs up for that. But I've gone walkies, and I'm, I'm good that way. I didn't do a ton yesterday. I was just relaxing, doing my best because of just everything that's happening. So thumbs up on that. And by everything happening, I mean just my birthday and my hamster being sick. But yesterday he was doing really good. This morning, not as good. So he's really not much long with this world. I'm amazed he's hung on this long. He's just not getting enough air. He's having difficulty breathing. <sighs> Yesterday he was sleeping in his burrow and burrowing and chewing. Today he's back to just sleeping in on top of bedding in the corner right here and I can hear him going <coughs> and clicking with the inhales when he breathes because he can't breathe through his nose. Poor guy. But still he's hanging on and you know good or bad that's the way that is. But I went and had some sleeping issues yesterday. I did some things. Executive dysfunction made stuff difficult. I finally was able to push through. And I did a too long didn't watch and a fuller story video and finally was able to upload them to the reaction channel explaining where I've been. So thumbs up on that. A very good thing indeed. Ugh. Past that, just been you know, sleeping when it's nighttime, going for walkies every night, uh, trying to do what I can and taking care of my my poor sick animals. And I mean, Amelia is doing better. I mean, she's actually put weight back on, and that's a very very good thing. So thumbs up on that. Checking my list here, there is actually one thing that I wanted to talk about this. Acting and facial expressions and movies. As I said before, I watch a lot, not a lot, 
I watch some movie reaction channels and there are some music reaction channels I listen to. I've watched a lot of people react to like Blazing Saddles and recently as well I watched somebody react to Rocky Horror Picture Show. One thing that I love in the movie Blazing Saddles Gene Wilder plays a younger fellow who used to be the Waco Kid, the fastest gunman in the world. Now he's just a drunkard. The sheriff is this black guy who is set up to fail, set up to be the sheriff in a town of just horribly racist white people. But considering the time, everybody was horrifically racist back then. That's just the way times were. So it's like, wasn't unusual. But Gene Wilder's character and the sheriff become really, really good friends. But at one point, when they're first introduced, Gene Wilder's character falls off of the top bunk in the in a jail cell. When I say falls, it's just from the, the he's dangling from his waist and going uh upside down. And when the sheriff asks him, "Are we awake?" Uh, Gene Wilder says, "I don't know. Are we black?" And when he says, yes, we are, he goes, oh, then we're awake. But then he gives him a hand. The sheriff helps Gene Wilder's character get down. One brief moment, like a half second long while this is happening, Gene Wilder's character turns and looks at the black sheriff and he smiles in appreciation. But when he does, his entire face just lights up. This isn't just a, I'm just smiling for the camera thing. Every part of his face is showing, thank you, I appreciate this, and it just glows. It is a beautiful shot, and it sets up the characters wonderfully. The other part about the Rocky Horror Picture Show thing, is I'm gonna take my glasses off for this, I doubt I'm gonna be able to do it as well as I would like to. But at one point toward the end of the movie, there's one character, Riff Raff, and Riff Raff is having a mild emotional breakdown after killing the main character of the movie. They're the human characters because Riff Raff and his sister are from the planet, well, from another galaxy, since there's problems with YouTube and, and reality of late, so I don't want to get demonetized, but she says, why did you do that? He liked you, and he just goes, he didn't like me. He never liked me. And he's just, ah, upset face, looking downward. And then in that moment, one of the human characters who is you know, a conservative type just goes, you did the right thing, sort of statement. And you can see on the character who's playing Rip Raff's face that that is the moment when I had forgotten you existed. You reminded me because he's just, I'm upset. And then as you did the right thing, the head comes up and then a slow turn like this followed by the full body to look. And it's like, oh, oh, you really shouldn't remind them that you exist at times. But that was a perfect encapsulation of, I am angry and upset to, oh, I had forgotten about you. It was really, really good. So if you like watching movies and you like those little tiny points like that, they're small, but they are awesome. That They are there. Thumbs up for that. As for the other stuff in life, I, this is actually kind of a funny one. It's... For me, it's funny. I have said that I do not, these days, push my creativity and my subconscious. I have tried all my life, up until the last couple of years, to push, get an idea, and then push it where I want it to go. And I have never really been able to do that well. It's only in the past couple of years, I've just been letting my subconscious go where it wants to go. I give it a general idea and then push it and then I just follow it after it's had a time to work on stuff. That's not always the way it works. My subconscious is always doing this stuff and sometimes it jumps in at some point and says, oh, I've been working on this, guess what? And then it's like, oh, 
Oh, and it makes sense. I had mentioned that human beings taste wonderful to the cryptid population in my setting. I mean, everything about us tastes good. I mean, our meat tastes good. All of the substances we create taste good. Our hair tastes good. Our bones taste good. Our fingernails taste good. Our teeth taste good. Everything is delicious. That is a natural product of our body. That is why they snip out and just get rid of the lower intestine because that's not us, that's food we've taken in and processed and junk that our system isn't going to use. Cryptids don't want to eat that, so they just toss that part out. The rest of us is delicious. I mean, even at that, the intestine holding the contents tastes good. It's the contents that are they're just no fun to eat. But I had mentioned that human flesh under cryptid teeth and claw parts like gelatin under a butter knife and our bones crunch underneath cryptid teeth and claw like a sugar wafer cookie just crunch in your hands. But that's just for teeth and claw. Anything else, they're still a little stronger than us. I mean, they can tear your arm off like a chimpanzee can, but they can't just, you know, they're still matter. It's only the, the teeth and the claw that just goes right through us with, like we're not even there. The only real part of our body that provides a crunch is teeth. And so I had thought, you know, that that is something that they crave. I mean, when I like to eat things, I like crunch. I know a lot of other people like crunch. Crunch is important. That feeling of crunching when you're eating is important. Critters don't get that when they're eating us. We're all soft and squishy, except for our teeth. Those are crunchy. And I was getting ready for bed the other day, and I suddenly just started laughing because it's so dark. But my mind and my subconscious went, hey, remember when you were thinking about this? Well, this is a logical extrapolation. If they like eating teeth, just like they like eating anything, and they like eating people, but they have a large genetic imperative that says, don't. It being genetic, some people are not affected by that. Well, some cryptids are not affected very strongly. Some are very strongly affected. But even those that would not ever kill or hurt a human being to eat them, you don't act against your nature. Their nature says don't do that. We still smell and taste delicious. They just have that urge to not do it. Human beings, even when we get our vision clear and we can interact with the cryptid world, we are still a part of this world, our hyper-capitalistic resource competition world. When we see a market that can be exploited for capital gain, we take care of that market. We push into it and we make and sell things. Human beings can get the vision and be able to interact with the cryptid world. There are some cryptids that interact very closely with human beings and so look and can think and act in the human world just like humans. There is going to be a market for snacks for cryptids. Either an enterprising human being or an enterprising cryptid is going to sell bags of teeth for cryptids just to crunch on and eat as a snack. Like we get some a bag of mints and we eat that, cryptids are going to be pop a tooth into your mouth and just suck on that for a while. Or chew it a bit, crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, that just tastes so good. And it's got crunch. So yeah, like you go into a bar and find a bowl of peanuts, or at least you used to. I don't know if you can do that anymore. At least, you know, you used to be able to do that sort of stuff. In a cryptid world, because they still do gather, they still do drink, there would be like complimentary bowls of teeth so that you can just eat those while you're drinking. And cryptid bodies, I've mentioned, they are very, very hardy and resilient. It's hard if not impossible, to really poison a cryptid. Their livers work so well that most toxins and parasites and bad stuff just is taken care of. This is why if a cryptid wants to drink, they gotta drink 
a lot. When we take one shot, one ounce of 40 proof, like Jim Beam, whatever the heck that stuff is, whiskey, bourbon, whatever that is, I can't remember, I haven't drank in a long time. But a cryptid would have to drink a full fifth of that to get the effect that we would from one shot. So yeah, cryptids, like they'll go through, if they just go to a bar or a restaurant to talk, they're gonna be going through about three, four bottles, five or six, if they want to get a little bit extra tipsy. And they're gonna be crunching and munching teeth. I imagine there's also a market for other human type snacks. I'm not sure yet. I, I, the conscious part of me, is not sure how far up down this rabbit hole I want to travel that my subconscious has been going into. I mean, the cryptid world, I really like, but it is grim, very grim. These are damaged people living in a damaged world, and they are largely broken and trying to figure out their place in a world that is harsh and cold and dangerous and cares nothing about them. That's the whole cryptid idea. So if it's grim like that, it makes sense. But at the same time, the cryptids are trying to change. Well, they are not trying to change. They are being forced to change. They have no control over their own development. After all, they are shackled to us and our fears, our hopes, our dreams, our nightmares, our best and our worst. This is why some of the things that cryptids don't have to deal with that we do are true. There are things like there is reproductive assault, you know, by people that are evil. That sort of thing does not occur among cryptid people, the cryptids, because that is something that human beings do to each other as a form of control. While the cryptids are shackled to us, they're not going to be you know, performing reproductive assault on each other. And they're not designed to dominate us. They are designed to be a reflection of us they do not engage amongst themselves or against humans in reproductive assault, except it being genetic, there are some people that are on the far end of the probability curve that do. Just as there is no real domestic violence among couples in relationships like Clausy and her husband, Alan, there is divorce, <coughs> And 90% of the time among cryptids, it's amicable. Just, I don't like you anymore, you don't like me, we're going our own ways. Cryptids being cryptids though, sometimes a divorce ends up with, you know, there's one of the two people that's leaning up against a tree, smeared in gore, you know, their belly bloated, and they just go, blah, we're divorced. <sighs> and that's how it happens. There are no authority figures in the cryptid world. And I've opened up 24 hours where the comments in the My Community tab. I'm going to go through and thank how many people who left me comments in the past 24 hours. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count American Sign Language, well, you've already seen how my brain works. So, let me call up my Chrome. We have David A. with a very good idea. Thumbs up and thank you. There is a name that I cannot pronounce, but thank you very, very much. Talking about the Game Book Lone Wolf series. There is Francis Persimmon. Thumbs up and thank you. And there is Flora Mew. Greatly appreciated. Good to see you in the comments. Jesse Koskinen. Thumbs up and thank you. Good to see you. J A Double Y. Greatly appreciated. And He's still kicking, but I don't know how long Ghost is, is going to be kicking. There is Josh Sprouse, thumbs up and thank you. There is Ben Jamies, thumbs up and thank you. Take, greatly appreciated. There is Chris, thumbs up, thank you very, very much. RJ Mitchell, thumbs up and good to see you. Ben B, thumbs up and good to see you as well. There is Adrian, F-N-T-E-S, always good to see you as well. Then there is G-H-U-L-D-O-R-G-R-E-Y. I do not know how to pronounce that properly, but thank you very, very much. And that is it. 14 people who left me comments in the past 24 hours. Greatly appreciate Get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people, if only in text and if only for a short time. 
I'm going to try and get some stuff done today. I still have to call my genetic father. Two weeks now I've been trying and unable to. <sighs> but hopefully you can get done the things that you need to get done. But if you can't, don't beat yourself up. No need. It's not going to help you. And with all the diseases and things in the world, please take appropriate care for your situation and location. There's not much you can do if there's a bus with your name on it looking to smear you over the landscape. But if you can, avoid the bus. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and that is a very good thing.